Nathan Outlaw, great to have on the show. Thank uh, you. What are you making then for us? What, what's on the menu? Right, we're going to do a, a turbo on the bone, which yeah. is, the, is one of them chef's favourites, I think. Cooking fish on the bone is fantastic. It is. And I'm going to put with that just simply some grilled leeks. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to do a butter dressing, which is my take on tartar sauce. It's yeah. red wine reduced with red wine vinegar, water and sugar. That's what we want to get on now, yep. so I'll get that on. And, and then you can it, run through the rest yep. of it. Yep, and then we've got some gherkins and capers, and then we've got our fin herbs, which is classically known, which is uh, chives, uh, tarragon, chervil and parsley. <coughs> and then with the butter, we're going to have some uh, garlic and some um, thyme in there as well. Right, so you've got red wine and red wine vinegar in here, yep. yeah? And we're going to bring that right down. Right, OK. I'm just going to start prepping this fish. Now, what's nice about a fish like this is you can actually, if you're up for it, you can cook this whole. Yeah. And if you was to do that, you'd need to, to remove the fins on the side, like this. You like a turbot pan, really? That's, yeah, a nice yeah. big turbot pan. Or yeah. a big, big roasting pan will do the trick as well. Yeah. Now, cooking on the bone, is, you say it's a chef's favourite, because it, it just alters the texture slightly, doesn't it, really? Mm. It has a, it's, it's quite a special flavour on the bone. It's yeah. quite a bit different, I think. It's quite forgiving as well. Right. In regards to sort of, um, I find that if you've got a bit of something on the bone, it'll give you another five to ten minutes of yeah. it resting like meat does, yeah. the same yeah. way, so, which is quite good, because fish does overcook quickly. Yeah. Now, I mentioned at the top, you, you know, you are, you are probably, you are the only two-star Michelin chef that just basically cooks exclusive of fish. That's, that's it. That's yep. your menu. That's all we do. Yeah, I mean, I let the markets and the fishermen tell me what's available. And yeah. um, then I just cook it, you know, and that's, that's the secret, really. It's, uh, and obviously there's a bit more to it than that. But, um, but while that was playing, you say you, you actually still buy your fish from the guy in that, that yeah, video I mean, clip? Yeah, well, a lot of the fishermen in Padstow are in that Rick Stein clip, but it's still there for, uh, fishing now. Yeah. So um, my wife's from Padstow, so I, um, you know, we, I get to know all these people, and it's, yeah, it's good. And uh, it's, you know, the best way to buy fish is off the fishermen. Yeah. So what I've got here, you keep the head yeah. if you're going to make a stock. Right. But what we're going to do now is we're going to cut it down. It's what's traditionally known as a tronchon. I think that's how you pronounce it in French. Is that right? Is that yeah, correct? It sounds yep. good, yeah. Yep. Sounds good, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> and so you just remove the tail, like so. Yeah. Again, keep that for stock. Right. Now, using a meat cleaver because the bone is quite thick inside it, yeah? That's right, yeah. And as it gets thicker as you go down as well with... Um, the bigger the fish gets, obviously, the thicker the... Um, Thicker it actually gets. Yes. But these get to be, I mean, some of these, the, the halibuts and that kind of thing, huge size. Yeah, anything that's big like this would be lovely to cook on the bone. Yeah. I mean, uh, this is probably about as small as you want to go, actually, with a turbot. You might think, well, it's a massive cook. Actually, it's not that big. This is actually quite a small one, so. Yeah. Right, so you find the centre bone, make an incision with your knife down to the bone, and then you want to come all the way down. Yeah. Ruin James's uh, rolling, pin. rolling pin, as you do. I'm all you knew of you there. Look at that. <laughs> I did see right. pasta machine list. <laughs> yeah, 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 pasta machine as well. And then what you want to do is you want to find... You can break this down. This will feed a probably about, you know, six people, but what I'm doing here is you're cutting the nice prime bit out just for you. And what we do is, again, come down yeah, to the Yeah, you've bone. already ruined it, so you might as well... OK. Yeah. And then again. And then what that leaves you with is a beautiful piece... And a ruined rolling pin. A ruling pin. <laughs> Yeah. We'll get him to send you in. Someone will send yes, you right. in. Yes, right. There we got that. We've got a lovely piece of um, turbot. OK? Yep. And then what we do is a little bit of salt on that. Right, so... Now I'm going to deep fry the capers that you want in there as well, so... Yep. And then a they touch of oil. So hot pan. You're going to get your oven on for about 220. Yep. OK, before you even start any of this, really. Yep. And then you want the white skin down. And the reason why you want the white skin down is the white skin actually becomes almost like a fish crackling. Right. And um, it's good to eat, so it's almost like, and that's the protection as well of it, it protects sink, the fish. There's a sink over the back there with wash your yeah. hands. You wouldn't, you wouldn't turn it over then, just literally no. just, right? If you, if you turned it over and you tried to cook it on the um, darker side, what will happen is when it's cooked, yeah. the actual dark side will stick to the white, to the actual flesh and then you have trouble getting it off. Okay, right, now you're going to do, so you want a little bit of colour on there, I'll yep. pop it in the oven for you. Again, a little bit more salt. I'd like to go straight into the oven. Yeah, just right. like that, yeah? Yeah, that's it, straight so in. So how long now, for? About 10 to 12 minutes. OK, that one in there's got a couple of minutes left, yep. so that'll go in there. Yep. But that will, will let you, so like I said before, it will, um, it's quite good to you. It allows you to sort of cook it a little bit more and be a bit more um, right. hardy with it. Right. We've got some leeks in there, which are in salted boiling water. Now, there's the fried little caper berries. They sort of pop open, don't they? The little right, yeah. fla uh, flowers, sorry, the little capers, not capers. And that's berries, a nice, but... um, nice texture to the dish as well. Right. So we've got our red wine reducing down to make the dressing. Yeah. 
Now, to, with, the, with the dressing, we also need some butter. And I thought, when I was coming on here to cook for you, James, what better than a big handful of butter? Don't know what you to mean. Make the sauce. I know you like the sauce. And then what we got in there as well? I've hit it 40 and I've gone on to olive oil now. Ah, oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so we've got some Not. thyme in there, a little bit of crushed garlic as well. And what yeah. we're after is what Rick said in that VT then, with the, um, we need the bernoisette, yeah. which is nut brown butter, which should give that flavour to it. Right. OK. Brilliant. So this is the colour from it, is that what you... Yeah, so what, you have to, what yeah. will happen is you get, a, like, a nuttiness to it, which really complements the sort of... Uh, that sort of a turbot, that sort right. of fish, really well. Now, about your restaurant, it's basically... Well, tell us where it is, cos you've got the restaurant and you've got, like, a... Well, you've got, like, a, a, a brasserie next door to it as well now. That's right, yeah, we've got, um... A seafood and Grill, which is, um, basically a very simple uh, fish and meat restaurant. Um, but everything that we do there is, again, from the, from the boats, from the markets... Yeah. ..and from the farms. And then what we try... What we do there is we, we sort of don't tell people what what they're going to have, we give them the choice. So we've got lots of sauces, lots of side yeah. dishes and lots of fish and meat, and you choose how you want it. Right. Yeah, so which is quite a nice way of doing it. And then we've got the fine dining, which is ten tables. Yeah. Um, and that's where I, I create an eight-course menu, which currently has 14 varieties of seafood on it. In one, so you'll eat 14 varieties of seafood when you eat with us, which is, if you're after the best of the fish, then hopefully that will, you will see it there. Yeah. Um, and they're both actually very similar in a way. I mean, the fish stock's made the same in both restaurants, the, the fish is from the same boats or right. from the same markets. There's no difference, it's just they're different offerings. Yeah. So the legs are going on yeah, there. What I've done to them, I've just sort of put a little bit of oil on there and a bit of salt and pepper. Now, as well as that, not, not if you're just not that busy enough, you've also got this um, well, the little academy. That'll be great to go to. What, tell us about that, then. Well, that's right. Well, what we've got is um, Cornwall College, which is... Yeah. Um, there's two sites, actually. There's three sites in total, but the two sites I'm working with are Hambourne and St Austell. And um, we're, we're running an academy, Nathan Outlaw, which is a, basically it's an, an extension to the, to the VRQ course, which is what chefs actually do now right. uh, to get their qualification. So it's not an actual replacement for the course, it's an enhancement. So it, gets, um, yeah. you know, it gives them a little bit more than just the normal qualification. Yeah. There'll be 12 students in each site doing that. Right. Um, so 24 in total. And the first year's... Uh, stu the first bunch of uh, people that are coming on to it. Yeah. Um, we'll be coming on in September. So I'm looking forward to that. It's good to work with, um, yeah, with yeah. younger people. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, in Cornwall, we've got some amazing suppliers. Uh, yeah. So I'll be taking them around to suppliers. I'll be showing them different things, yeah, masterclasses, yeah. hopefully inviting lots of other chefs to come and show them things, yeah. which would be good. What are you looking at me for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Right, OK, so our red wine reduction is reduced. Our yeah. um, leeks are there. Now, the fish, when this is cooked, the, simple, <laughs> the simplest way to know this cooked is that the skin will just peel off. Yeah. And when it peels off, that means it's ready. If it doesn't peel off, you put it back in the oven for a couple of minutes. Right. OK, so off that comes. Now, obviously there's no seasoning in there, so we'll season that with a little bit of salt. Yeah. And then if you've got some lemon segments, Jay, that's brilliant. How's it looking so far? It looks delicious. A little bit on there? Yeah, that's lovely. And then what yep. we're going to do is put that onto the plate. I don't know if you can see that, but underneath that, the white skin is all crisped up, so that's edible now. Right. Right, so we're going to make the reduction. So we've got here yeah. the red wine reduction. Which, which is thick. Yeah, nice yeah. and thick. And that's because you've got the sugar in there as well as yep. reducing it So down. what we're trying to balance is the sweet, the sour, the savoury, the salty. Yeah, yeah. all them flavours together, which will work really well. Yeah. So you've got two spoonfuls of the red wine reduction. We've got four spoonfuls of the butter. Maybe I'll put five in there, actually. And we take some of the gherkins and the capers that have been chopped up into nice diamond shapes. <laughs> and then with some of the herbs, yeah. sit all in there. I've and actually done those hexagons, actually, really. No, they, look good. Yeah. they look good. Touch of salt. OK, so we put our uh, leeks onto the plate there. And this is quite a simple, you, know, you can do this with carrots, you could do this with asparagus we've just been do it using, because yeah. it's been in season. OK, and then we just spoon over the dressing. Right, so. And the dressing splits because you've got it's like putting olive oil, I suppose. Yeah, in it as it's well. just a different way of doing it. I mean, usually you'd have a, a um, you know, an oil, an olive oil, or a rapeseed oil. But I think you know, butter with fish is beautiful. Yeah. And obviously, it's a it's a birthday treat, so. It certainly do looks day. brilliant. And then you got the deep fried. Yeah, and then just for a bit of texture, we have got some deep fried capers over the top. How good does it. that look? And there you go. So tell us about that dish again. So we've got our turbot on the bone. It's been roasted in the oven with a tartar red wine dressing and grilled leeks. Easy as that.
Great job on the wine for Alan's crap. Right? Cheers, but we're still no closer to thinking of a present to get for James. He loves his Montrachet. Well, posh burgundy is lovely, but it's no bargain. Yeah, you're right. Do you know what, guys? I'm really sorry. I've got to get a tipple for Nathan's turbot. See ya. See ya. Nathan, your turbot is a fish course treat for the birthday boy. And it's left me with a delicious dilemma. Because even though turbot is a white fish, it's quite a textured one. So I could go white or red. But if you're going white, you might choose something like this spicy Domaine Goebbelsberg Grüneveltliner from Austria. But I'm heading further east and I'm going for a light red. Now, the one I've picked is from a country you may not be that familiar with in wine terms. This is the 2011 Cosmina Pinot Noir, and it comes from Romania. Pinot Noir is a notoriously thin-skinned, temperamental grape variety, which is why value-for-money examples like this one are pretty difficult to find. It comes from the Banat region of Romania, and its cool climate origins are really apparent in the glass. On the nose... Classic Pinot scents of red berries and red cherry, just a little bit of plum and some spice. The palate this is fruity, juicy, and slightly oaked. Now, the wine is light enough to work really well with the turbot, but also has enough weight to partner that red wine dressing. More to the point, there's a herbal undertone which picks up on the leeks, the thyme, and the tarragon. Nathan, from the land of Dracula, I bring you a wonderful red wine. I promise you, it doesn't bite. <laughs>